Yo, Stackmo Chris here, man. I'm going to be dropping the full candlestick guide for you guys in this video. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up a fresh chart for you guys. Boom, let me just pull up a fresh US 30 here. And boom, let's go ahead and get straight into it. So you guys might see these candles all on the screen. And let me go ahead and let's start from start to finish. So each of the candlesticks, they're going to have something that's called a body. So you guys are going to go ahead and see the body of the candlestick. Each of these candlestick bodies, um, each candlestick has a body that you're going to be able to see here. And that's going to be the shaded dark areas on the candlesticks. So you guys are going to be able to see the red shaded area there. You guys are also going to be able to see the green shaded area too. Okay. So on both of those, you're going to be able to go ahead and analyze like, okay, I'm seeing the body of the candles. So I'm going to go ahead and see the amount of wow. volume within each of the candles as well. So each of the candles have volume as well, if that's not something you guys don't already know. So let me go ahead and just uh, change this here. Boom. Okay. So yeah. So another thing you guys need to go ahead and take an account for as well, is you guys are going to see these shaded lines on the candlesticks. And these are going to be called wicks. Now there's going to be two versions of the wicks. There's going to be what's called an upper wick. And then there's going to be a lower wick. So upper wicks are going to be the wicks on top of the body. So let me go ahead and body for you guys. So the body's going to look like this. It's just going to be the shaded area. You guys are going to be able to go ahead and analyze this. This is going to be the body. There's going to be an upper wick. And then there's going to be what's called a lower wick as well. Right? So you're going to have a lower wick. All right. I'm the Cool. Call praise be to God. All right. So as you guys can see here, boom, boom, boom. You're going to go ahead and see the lower wick. You're going to see the body of the candlestick, and you're also going to see the upper wick. So what these wicks are going to represent, wicks are kind of like shadows of a candlestick, right? So it's going to go ahead and represent the price action that was left before the candlestick closed. Now, when you guys see the candlestick closed, it's going to go ahead and open another one right to the next to it, right next to it to the right. Another candlestick is going to open, right? And you guys are going to go ahead and see the price action of the wicks. Um, so this was the upper wick. So, uh, so price reached here at one point on this candlestick, but then sellers came in control and then the candlestick decided to get pushed back down. And then, uh, the next candlestick was a bearish candlestick price pushed all the way down here. And then price came back up on the next candlestick and pushed all the way back down and then went back down again on the next candlestick. So that's how you guys are able to go ahead and analyze candlesticks. And each time frame has its own set of candlesticks. So the one hour each of these candlesticks that you guys are able to see on the screen is going to represent one hour of time. So once again, each of these candlesticks that you guys are going to see on the screen is going to represent one hour of time. So the one hour is going to go ahead and see be one hour candlesticks, four hour. Each of these candlesticks are going to be for four hours daily. Each of these candlesticks are going to be a day. So as you guys can see, the 12th of August, 13th of August, 14th of August. Um, you do have the two day as well. You do have the weekly. Each one of these candles is going to represent a week in time. So you're going to have Monday the first here, and then you're going to have Monday the eighth. So that's going to be two weeks of price action. Once again, these all also do have lower and upper wicks. So all time frames are going to have these things. And then so all time frames are going to have a body. All time frames are going to have a lower wick. And all time frames are going to have an upper wick. Now, one thing you guys are going to want to analyze, especially once you start getting to the meat and potatoes of the market, is you guys are want to start to analyze where, pretty much where the wicks are on the higher time frames. Because what you're going to notice is they're going to pretty much be congruent. So as you guys can see here in this area here, price pretty much came into the same areas. And we were able to analyze this off of analyzing these upper wicks that you guys do see here on the screen. So as you guys can see here, price came into this wick, went down, price came into this wick area and decided to go down. So that's how you guys are able to find zones, right? So that's what a zone is as well. So a lot of people might hear, okay, so you might want to mark out your zones. So all zones is, is pretty much an area where wicks are congruent or a candlestick structure or wicks are congruent. And you're pretty much going to want to base your trade off of that. 
So as you can see here, if price decided to fall down in this area, it would have been smart to go ahead and short within this area. Again, once we saw the price action come within our favor. Okay. So it's going to be the same thing on the monthly candlestick as well. Each of these candlesticks are going to represent one month of price action. Okay. So that's how you guys are going to be able to analyze the tops and the bottoms of the market. And it's going to be absolutely fantastic, man. Inshallah. Okay. So here's how you guys go ahead and use this to your advantage. So once again, you guys are going to go ahead and mark out your zones and then you're able to scale down to your smaller time frames, and you're going to be able to see congruent action. So as you guys can see here, this is what it looks like on the four hour. So once again, each one of these candlesticks is going to represent four hours of price action. Okay. So, and that's because we selected the four hour time frame. So depending on the time frame you're on, that's the amount of, uh, candles you're going to see per time frame that you're on. Okay. So you're going to be able to scan on your smaller time frame and be like, okay, I see price uh, shorting around this zone here. So I'm probably going to go ahead and look for resistance. So when you guys see price coming up to a top and then falling down, that's what's called resistance. Okay, that's going to be what's called resistance. Now, when you guys see candle structure forming a bottom and then decides to bounce up, this is what's going to be called support okay so support here so this is going to be some support because price decided to bounce all the way up to the top up here so that's what's so if you guys might hear support and resistance and you're not too sure what that is this is what it is okay so resistance is when price creates a area um in which it's going to go ahead and fall down and once again supply is going to be an area where people want to buy and price is going to go ahead and bounce up so resistance is going to be when sellers come into play. Support is when resistance is when sellers come into play. Resistance is when sellers come into play. And support is when buyers come into play. Okay? So that's what you guys want to just go ahead and realize. So that's pretty much the main things you guys are going to go ahead and realize in volume. Volume equals the amount of orders slash contracts. So if you guys hear volume as well, you guys are going to be able to use volume, support, and resistance to go ahead and identify key setups. So you want to be able to go ahead and identify areas with high amounts of volume and you can use this by using the indicators pivots high and low and swing levels in liquidity by Leviathan. And then you guys are going to be able to see the volume numbers using swing points in liquidity and see the uh, exact price using pivots high and low. So you can use them both congruently and you're going to be able to see key zones, right? So I hope this guide helped. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. It's Stack Mode, Chris. I love y'all. Stay prayed up with God. Peace.